Hello everyone. For those who don't know me, I am Holly Trantham, TFD's creative director. And this is the totally chill guide to work and life. So for the past eight years, I've been working behind the scenes on all of the content you see here on YouTube and elsewhere on TFD's channels. And I also wrote our second book, Beyond Getting By, which is coming out this April. Throughout this series, I'm going to dive into some of the topics I go into even more in depth in the book, all about how to approach your work and your money from a totally chill place, where they help you live the life you want without ever becoming your sole focus. Whether you are married, partnered, or living an amazing single life where your biggest responsibility is your feral cat colony, no judgment, that sounds amazing, we all have a future to think about. We imagine our retirement age selves as completely separate from who we are today. But the reality is that in order to get the best chance at the future you want to have, you have to start planning for it as soon as possible. Betterment is the investing and savings app that puts your money to work and your mind at ease. With their expert-built ETF portfolios, you are automatically diversified across thousands of stocks and bonds at once, meaning your money can multitask in the background while you do literally anything else. Plus, their automated investing and tax smart tools are designed to help maximize your returns so you can feel secure knowing your money is putting in the work. Get started, be invested. Go to betterment.com TFD or click the link in this video's description to sign up in minutes. Your future self will thank you. If there is one question we are trying to find the answer for here at TFD, it is how did having an incompetent husband become an entire genre of comedy? Humor reflects reality, I guess, because the bleak truth is that despite making major strides in the last several decades when it comes to women in the workforce, we are still facing a wide gap when it comes to domestic labor. According to a study from the Pew Research Center, in marriages that are otherwise egalitarian, men are spending more time on leisure activities or relaxing, 25.2 hours per week, than are women who get a median 21.6 hours, while these wives are logging an average 4.6 hours worth of housework compared to their husband's 1.9 hours throw kids into the mix and the disparities deepen. In households with children under 18, women spend 12.2 hours a week on caregiving compared to their husband's nine hours. And it's not simply about money and the lower earner defaulting to taking on more household responsibilities, because even when a woman is the breadwinner in an opposite sex relationship, she is still more likely to take on the majority of household responsibility. The Pew report found that there's only one type of opposite sex marriage where women don't perform more unpaid work than their husbands, when the wife is the sole breadwinner. But even then, the husband and wife spend the same amount of time on household chores each week. This is not saying that women or men who earn less than their spouses should take on an outsized amount of household responsibility. It's still demonstrating how women in these relationships are defaulting to constantly being the default caretaker, even when the previous reasoning for this default dynamic, i.e. men providing financially while women provide domestically, no longer applies. And of course, we cannot talk about domestic labor without talking about the curse that is having it all. Now, unlearning gender roles we were all raised with is easier said than done. But especially for those of us who were coming of age in a post-Sex in the City era, we have been cursed with the idea that we can and should have it all. The impressive career and the loving marriage, and being a present parent, and having time for a social life, and having fulfilling personal hobbies, and being able to invest in our physical health. The list goes on. I don't even have kids and I'm exhausted by the idea of balancing five out of those six things that I just named. Having it all sounds great, but in order to have it all, someone has to do it all. And in opposite sex relationships, the person doing it all often falls on the woman, especially when it comes to taking on the mental load of household labor. Unfortunately, none of the waves of feminism have come with a parallel revolution of men of their own volition taking on more household responsibilities. I do not believe men are helpless, and I do not believe men are irredeemable even if they are currently oblivious to their own learned helplessness. But if we valued what we deem women's work as much as we do labor outside the home, maybe more men would already be taking on more of these tasks without being asked. Because it is important work, and men should be doing it too. Before I jump into the how-tos of this video, I want to address that most of what I've been talking about so far is opposite sex relationships, but I do think it's crucial to assess your division of labor no matter what kind of household you're living in. Straight cisgender men just happen to be the people who generally have a lot of work to do in this area. But whether you live with a romantic partner, roommates, friends, family, etc., adults in the same household should be equally invested in making sure they are participating in an equitable household for everyone. So in order to stop feeling burdened by taking on everything when it comes to household management, start by redefining what your roles mean to you. 
We all have different roles that we play in our lives, and we are taught that different roles have different definitions. And the idea of having it all means trying to fit into each one of those definitions simultaneously, AKA trying to be the most present, amazing on top of it, bake sale running wife and mother, while also being a kick-ass C-suite executive who manages to go to Pilates with her friends and somehow always has a perfect manicure. And while all of us feel pressure to be good at our roles, no one feels that kind of pressure more acutely than mothers. In 2017, Time conducted a survey of 913 new moms finding that 70% of them felt pressure to mother a certain way i.e. they had a clearly defined idea of what a good mom was supposed to look like, influenced by their culture, family, society, and other external factors. And I think it's arguable that men feel the same kinds of pressures when it comes to their roles. They're told by society that their value is only in being a financial provider, not in being emotionally supportive or contributing to the running of a household. And we actually did a previous video on the unfair costs of being a man that is super relevant to this point, and we'll link to that in the description. And one really shocking thing I came across when researching this book was that single moms often have have more free time than married moms. We would think the opposite is true because married moms at least have a spouse to delegate to, but that's just not the reality. And here's a quick excerpt from the book. In fact, single and divorced mothers often have more free time than married mothers, and mothers with husbands often spend more time on housework. That's the issue with the adult toddler husband. Instead of an equal partner, he becomes another person who's your responsibility, essentially another kid. And in her research for her book, Drop the Ball, author Tiffany Dufu found that more financially privileged moms had a harder time letting go of household management than less privileged and single moms. The single mothers were, by virtue of their own circumstances, more likely to look outward and utilize their community for help. In the book, we also share an exercise to help you redefine the roles in your own life, but you can also start doing this on your own. What does being a good mother, sister, daughter, employee, boss, etc., mean to you? Is that definition informed by your own values or by what society tells you? When it comes to your home life, do you take on more than what's equitable because you feel like you should? What is it that's telling you you should? And now here, at least to me, is the fun part, auditing your household responsibilities. So once you've redefined your roles and started emotionally detangling yourself from what you should be doing, I think it's imperative to start assessing your time and energy spent on household tasks from an objective point of view. If you are part of our society, you've already seen my household management spreadsheet, which I also have shared in the book. But you can also just make your own spreadsheet or list to help you assess your current division of labor in your home. Write down everything that falls under the umbrella of household management, including daily tasks like child and pet care to more irregular to-dos like coordinating holiday plans with family or leading your annual spring cleaning. Then assess who is doing what. Is it an equitable split or should you divide up the task list differently? On my own spreadsheet, when I initially did this exercise with my husband, I color-coded everything so that we had a physical manifestation and visual of who was taking on more. I think you can guess who it was. Remember though that equitable does not mean that you have to split up your task list 50-50. For instance, when one partner is going through a particularly stressful time, the other person might start taking on more tasks. You'll also wanna take into account things like work schedules or disabilities that might affect how much one person can take on. You can even use a formalized contract to get your new system in place. The important thing is just getting everybody on board with owning their specific tasks. Whether it was Tiffany in her book, Drop the Ball, or Eve Rodsky in her book, Fair Play, I've noticed that gender and domestic labor experts tend to agree that task ownership is the name of the game. The point of having a household management spreadsheet that clearly delineates who owns what means that neither you or your partner has to shoulder the burden of reminding the other person that they need to do something. Now you may be asking, how does a spreadsheet make for a more chill home life? The whole point of this is just to get a system in place so that you don't have to think about it, like with investing in our last episode. Because I think for a lot of us, carrying the mental burden of knowing which tasks need to be done and then having to delegate those is almost more exhausting and stressful than actually carrying out household chores. If everyone owns their individual tasks, no one is required to keep all of those tasks straight in their head. Of course, taking on the task of putting this system in place in the first place is another mental burden. And I can't deny that it's frustrating when our partners can't see these deep-seated inequities in our home life without having them explicitly pointed out to them. But I would hope that anyone you share your life with would be open to having these kinds of frank conversations about how you divide up household labor, especially once they realize how much invisible labor has been stacked up on your plate, if this was an issue for you at all in the first place. And if it wasn't, I don't know why you watched this video. <laughs> And at the end of the day, the only thing any of us can change is our own behavior. So start there. As with everything else in the series, if you want a deeper dive into how to create an equitable home life, I highly recommend checking out our new book, Beyond Getting By, which you can pre-order at the link in our description now and will be published in April. And I'll see you next week for the last episode of the series, The Totally Chill Guide to Work and Life. Bye.